Good afternoon. Before we get started with coach and players, I have just a few announcements to go over. Um, NC Central is en route, so they should be here within the hour. Game is scheduled to tip off at 3.03 p.m. Central Time on Wednesday. We will not have a transcript of today's Zoom. Um, we should, we'll let you know when to expect those, but probably in a couple weeks, um, we'll let you know. If you did not receive an email yesterday confirming your credential requests for games this week, please re resubmit ASAP. We had uh, some technical issues the first 30 to 40 minutes once the credential website was live. Um, so if you did not receive an email yesterday confirming your request, please resubmit for games Wednesday and Thursday. Credential requests for the next batch of games, that'd be Western Illinois, North Carolina, Iowa State, Northern Illinois. Those will become active this weekend after these next two games. So go visit that website this week, starting this weekend to apply for the next four games. Those of you that are attending and covering the game on Wednesday, we apologize for the inconvenience, but because there's a women's game an hour, 90 minutes or so after the men's game, we ask that you, those that are covering the game from the press area, will need to move up to the Feller Club Room. And that is so our cleaning crew can sanitize the press area um, prior to the women's game. So we apologize for the inconvenience, but we will make sure not to start the Zoom until those of you get up to the Feller Club Room um, in time for the post game interviews. A um, couple more um, new media parking lot this year, lot 75, that is located in the let's see here, southwest of the arena across the street from Hawkins Drive. So after you park there, you will enter the arena in the west entrance. You will not need a parking pass to park in lot 75. Uh, one final, let me shut this off. One final announcement. Um, just encourage you to make sure to read emails that are sent out each week. You know, with it being a very unique season, um, there very likely will be information useful for those of you covering the Hawkeyes this year. So just make sure you read each email that's sent out from our office. Pretty much everything that you would need to know would be in those emails. Before we get to coach, does anyone have any questions? Okay, we'll get started with coach. Coach, thanks for joining us. If you have a question for Coach McCaffrey, please raise your hand in the participant window. Start with a question from Mike Halas. Fran, um, sorry about the news about uh, Jack's dad. Um, for those of us who never met him, didn't know him, what can you tell us about him? Mark, really an amazing guy. Uh, obviously got to know him well. Uh, incredible family. Uh, he's got two younger brothers, uh, two older sisters. Uh, actually, his one sister's about his age. Uh, she plays at Florida State. The other one played at Notre Dame. She's in med school. Uh, it's just so sad, you know, I... I it, Friday night, he spoke with his dad before he went to sleep and uh, had a great conversation with him. Probably incredibly optimistic about the season. Jack's playing extremely well, really healthy and, and, and strong and, and really 
and confident and then, you know, gets awakened early Saturday morning with such incredibly terrible news. So he's with his family now and it's where he should be with, with the people he loves and uh, we'll give him as much time as he needs. Tom Caker. Hey, Fran. Um, I'm Caker. Hey, hey, Fran, please pass along my sympathies to Jack and his family. But um, um, do, have you settled on a starting lineup for uh, for the game and, you know, how you went about figuring that out? I couldn't hear him. Starting lineup or, or how you came about setting uh, You know, I, I, think, I think the starting lineup was, was pretty well, you know, pretty well set. Uh, as long as everybody's healthy, you know, we don't know. When j got bashed in the eye uh, on Friday, he should be fine for the game. So, you know, you look at, you know, the guys that you would expect would be him and, and you know, the returning starters from last year with, with Joe Toussaint, obviously get a lot of playing time along with, you know, Patrick and, and, and Jack Nunji was a guy that was really, I think, poised to get a lot of playing time. That will happen upon his return. I don't really anticipate having him on Wednesday. Uh, but after that, you know, we, we've got a lot of ways we can go. I mean, the freshman class has been spectacular. So all those guys are ready to go. All of them are talented players, versatile guys. So uh, we'll see how it goes. Don Dodson. Yeah, Fran, I wonder if, if you could just uh, talk a little about how your team responded to, to the news about Jack's dad and, and uh, you know, how if, I'm assuming they kind of rallied around him and everything. But Well, I, I, you know, I, I think they, they were stunned. Uh, they were incredibly sad. And, and Saturday was a very somber day for us as a family. Uh I think Austin Ash in particular, you know, they played together because Jack, of course, lived in Iowa City when he was younger, and he and Austin played together. Uh, I reached out to Austin's dad, Kerry, who coached him. And he was, I mean, he was shaken. Uh, so you know, Austin and Connor and and Luca, uh, in particular, you know, that you know, they all came in together. So they were particularly affected. Uh, as were the rest of the guys, because Jack's just an amazing teammate. And, uh, you know, you just, you, your heart breaks for him, for his family. Uh, you know, I sp spoke to Jack on his way. He was, he jumped in a car and, and went with his girlfriend uh, down to uh, Indiana. And uh, as you can imagine, he was, practically inconsolable on the telephone. Uh, he was just anxious to get home. Thankfully, they were together. And, and I, you know, I felt good about that, that he was with somebody that, you know, could get him down there safely when she was driving. Uh, so, uh, you know, we'll see, you know, from here, you know, how much time he needs, you know, to get back. But the guys were, were really affected. Nobody knew. We had breakfast and then I brought the team together to tell them nobody knew. I thought maybe somebody would have found out by then. He rooms with one of our managers, Luke Slavens, and he was he was really uh, you know shook up and sad as, as you can imagine. Mark Emmer. Yeah, Fran, have you ever had to deal with a situation like this before as a coach? And I guess what, what can you do to console like Jack and your guys? How can you help? Well, uh, we had the exact same situation with Gabe Olashaney just a few years ago. Uh, you know, the one difference was that, you know, his, his family was in London. And so you know, she called that his mom called to tell us, uh, we got her on Skype and brought Gabe up to the office to speak with his mother and his sister and his brother. She told him and, uh, you know, phenomenally emotional moment for me and my staff. Uh, and we just kind of put our arms around him as, as he was sobbing. Uh, I remember uh, 
he made a decision to stay and, and go home later. Obviously, it was more complicated when you know you're trying to get back to London. Uh, so he stayed and, and uh, was very instrumental in us helping beat North Carolina on the road that year. And, and I remember, you know, the emotion in the locker room after that game because of it. Uh, for all of us, you know, particular game. So, uh, you know, it was ironically right about this time when that happened. So I actually spoke to Gabe this morning about that at some point. Uh, helped to get those two connected. Mark Emmer. Yeah, Fran, I guess uh, turning to the games at hand, um, have you heard from both teams? Are they are they COVID free? Are they are they going to be here? And what would it take, I guess, for a game to be canceled at this point? Well, you know, we're going to they're on their way. We're, we'll, we'll test them when they get here. We'll test them again. So I guess, uh, you know, positive test would would be something we'd have to deal with then. But right now, you know, they've been tested back home and they're on their way. But again, we'll, we'll test them again when they get here. We'll see what happens. Rick Brown. Yeah, Fran, 11 years ago, uh, you inherited a program that had three straight losing seasons, kind of rough going at the start. And now you start a season fifth in the country. What has been the big thing that's going to get you where you're at now over that time? Well, I, I, I think there's, there are so many things, Rick, that you would have to look at. Uh, starting with, you know, there was a commitment on behalf of our administration to improve our facilities, which were severely lacking at that time. And, uh, you know, Dale Howard really stepped up in, in helping us get the facilities that we needed. I mean, Gary Barta, uh, Mark Jennings at the time, you know, Sally Mason, they, they made a decision that we, we had to upgrade and we did. But I think, uh, the continuity on our staff and our commitment to uh, really trying to keep the, the best players in Iowa home as best we could uh, and to recruit character guys. Uh, really, you know, when you talk about programs improving, you know, a lot of times and coaches like to take all the credit for it, but the reality is the players are the ones that turn programs around and, and we did that with character guys who are really talented, committed to one another, committed to getting better. We surrounded them with, with a weight room and a practice facility and an arena and, and, and all, all the things that they needed to be successful. And uh, they just went out and competed. So I'm really proud of, of, of the guys that were part of that 11 years that you were talking about, Rick. Chad Lysico. Hi, Fran. Uh, just my condolences to the Nunji family. It's just heartbreaking. Uh, yep. Appreciate uh, that, Chad. Um, uh, what do you feel that do you see games getting canceled? I guess already. Do you feel any trepidation about starting this right now? I see Rick Pitino is even saying, you know, let's push it back to May Madness. Do you feel comfortable, you know, starting this and that this is okay? Yeah, I, I, I think uh, without question, you know, we should start now. Uh, I think Rick's. Partly right. Uh, I, I think there's got to be flexibility on the back end, uh, so we don't cancel, we postpone and reschedule. So I think you need more time to get games in. If we can get games in, get them in. If you have to cancel them, uh, don't cancel them for good. Postpone them and, and get somebody else and and, uh, and keep playing. You know, we're in daily testing. That's not a cure but it does give us a sense of where our guys are right now in terms of health. They've been diligent in, in how they live their lives and, and, and been really smart about it. So uh, guys are ready to play. I'm sure our, the, our opponents are ready to play and we'll just deal with, you know, cancellations if they come and if they don't, we'll play the game. Quinn Douglas. Coach, the Big Ten schedule gets dropped on Wednesday. Your, I just want to know what your initial thoughts were. Maybe if you guys maybe wish you could have gotten Illinois more than once or something of that nature. What, what was your initial thoughts when you saw the schedule dropped on Wednesday? Be truthful, I, I have no thought whatsoever either way. 
whatever schedule they put in front of us, we'll play it. Who we play once, who we play twice, who we play at home, who we play on the road, it's completely irrelevant to me. Tom Kicker. Hey, Fran, is the um, is the protocol for for visiting teams to be tested then when they come, before they leave and then when they get in town? Yeah. Yep. We'll test them. We'll test them day before day of. Rick Brown. Yeah, coach. Uh, both your sons said that you haven't changed one iota as far as a coach with high expectations. Uh, you keep everything on an even keel. Is that you pro you have that same approach with games. Is that the way you're approaching the season? Yeah, Rick, I, you know, I think, you know, once you have a certain philosophy and, and, and we also have a veteran club. So it, you know, we, we kind of approach our business a certain way. So we prepare and practice a certain way in June and July. Okay. This year was a little bit of a different experience, obviously. Then when, the, when, when you come back to school, all right, we, we, we amp it up, you know, we, the NCAA gives us more time. So we take advantage of that time, whether it be conditioning, whether it be in the weight room, whether it be on the court, whether it be skill development or five on five. And as you start to approach the games, you start getting ready for your opponent. What do they do? Who are we playing? What are their strengths? What are their weaknesses about their personnel? And, and, and we sort of take a very business-like approach. And I think what that does is it helps you deal with a long season. We've got a lot of games. You know, we're, we're, we're in the gym for from June until April. And uh, I think that's the best way to do it. You get too emotional one way or the other. You get too obsessed with talking about one thing versus another. Then you forget the task at hand. You know, it, it's a simple game and it needs to be approached that way. We're going we're gonna to compete. We're going to take care of the basketball. We're going to move it. And we're going to execute. And we're going to defend and, and, and rebound and play our style. Play the guys that deserve to play and get as many guys in there as we can and, and uh, deal with whether we win or lose that next game and try to get better before we play the one after that. So I don't see any other way to do it. I'm not going to get too emotional about it, uh, but we will be intense in terms of competing, you know, whether that be doing more competitive drills, more competitive scrimmages in practice, but that wouldn't change from one year to another. Chad. Uh, Fran, I know with Jack being out, uh, some people will get more playing time or whatever, but has have any of the freshmen definitively cracked the rotation, so to speak, that you, you feel like will be, you know, every game contributors going forward? Uh, you know, I would say, uh, you know, if you consider Patrick a freshman, he's one for sure. Uh, Keegan Murray certainly would, would be, would be a guy based on the fact that we need a front court guy. He has really proven that he can rebound the ball. He's incredibly versatile. Uh, but again, I mean, Tony and Aaron have played extremely well. You know, we just have some guys, we got CJ and J Bo and, and Joe T and, and Connor, we can swing with Wies camp. So we, we've got some guys there. But those guys are ready to go. They're really good, as is Chris. Josh a little bit behind. You know, he had he had some uh, difficulties uh, and then health-wise when he got here. So we'll get him through that. We'll get him ready down the road. We have time for one or two more if anyone has an additional question for Coach. As I see none, we will... Okay, thanks, guys. Thank you.
Just checking. Okay, we're on mute. Okay, we have redshirt sophomore CJ Frederick. If you have a question for CJ, please raise your hand in the participant window. First question comes from Mark Emmert. Yeah, CJ, I know uh, you and Jack Nudge are really close. Um, I guess, can you just maybe share with us what, what you thought when you heard the news and how you've tried to maybe help your teammate out here through this tough, tough time? Yeah. Um... You know, we were all kind of shocked um, with the news in the morning. I was just incredibly sad for him and his entire family. Um, you know, Mr. Nunji, Dr. Nunji was a great guy. Um, and it's just awful news. And we just have our thoughts and prayers with Jack and his entire family. Um, Jack's an incredible teammate, an incredible friend of mine. Um, and I know he's hurting and we just kind of reached out to him. And uh, you know, whenever he's ready um, to come back with us, no rush, um, just do what's best for he and his family. Any other questions for CJ? Rick Brown? CJ, what, what is this uh, time of the year for, like for you? You know, the first game of the season and you're all amped up or are you pretty calm about it? How do you handle it? Um, I'm really excited. Um, I don't know about amped up, but I'm sure when game day comes, I'll be very amped up. Um, but right now, I'm just getting ready to lock in for practice and lock in to the scout um, and really um, get these guys down and just have a good game plan and have great two days of practice. Um, and then when game day comes, I'm going to be really amped up and ready to play. David Eichold. Yeah, CJ, first of all, pass along my condolences to Jack and his family. I mean, horrific news. Mm -hmm. um, has it been difficult for, for you and the rest of the guys to be patient and just throughout this offseason with so much uncertainty? I mean, we see even games today already being canceled and stuff getting rescheduled. Has it been a pretty difficult uh, offseason just to be patient with everything? Um, I wouldn't say difficult. Um, we've had a lot of team meetings uh, just coming together as a team and, you know, coaches just done a great job with us of just um, getting us ready for whatever's going to come our way. Um, we've had multiple discussions on – you know, scheduling and, you know, there's going to be games that are canceled. Um, but right now we play Wednesday and we're going to act like we play Wednesday and we're just going to go one game at a time and just kind of have that mentality the whole season. Chad Lysico. Hey, CJ, uh, how did Bohannon hurt his eye? Who did that to him? <laughs> um, it was just kind of like a transition break. Um, he kind of turned around and, Ran right into Jack. Um, oh, really? Cut his eye pretty good. Tom Kicker. CJ, you guys transitioned over to the daily testing. What has that been like for you guys? And do you guys have kind of a schedule of when you do it? How's it different? You know, just kind of describe what daily testing is like. Yeah, it's not bad at all. You know, we have a nice routine. Just wake up at about 9, get here by 9.30, get your testing in, get the results in about 20 minutes, and get on with your day, get ready for practice. So it's pretty – it's pretty quick. It's pretty easy. Um, not too bad. Rick Brown. CJ, what's it like to be on a team with so many different scores? Is it easy to share the ball because you know someone else can score? What, what's that like? Yeah, it's um, it's really fun. You know, we have a really unselfish group. Um, and we have a lot of guys that can score and are unselfish. Uh, it just makes it a lot more fun um, to play. And we're all great friends. We're brothers. So... We all want to see each other do well. So um, it's really fun to play with these guys and just, um, yeah, play with them. We have time for a couple more for CJ, if anyone has questions. As I see none, we'll let CJ go. Thanks, CJ. Thank you.
Okay, we have Luca Garza. If you have a question for Luca, please raise your hand in the participant window. First question, Don Doxy. Yeah, look, I, I, I know you came in with Jack and, and were pretty close to him. How, how did you guys react to the news about his dad? Yeah, I mean, it was, it was obviously heartbreaking um, and, and devastating for a guy like that who, you know, um, you know, it was just horrible. You know, I've obviously met his dad and his whole family. Um, and, you know, it, it was horrible news. And uh, so we, you know, Coach brought us into a team meeting and told us, and, and Jack was already on his way to Indiana. So we didn't get a chance to see him. Um, but, you know, we're going to, you know, circle around him and just, you know, try to build him up. And, and hopefully, you know, when he comes back, um, you know, we can make him feel at home and, and make him feel a little bit better. Rick Brown. Luca, I'm sure all the attention has been nice since uh, the end of last year, heading into this year. But does a part of you just want to get the games going and let your action speak for itself? Yeah, definitely. You know, for me, I'm always a guy who tries to tune out uh, all the outside noise. And, um, you know, that's definitely what I've been doing. You know, obviously, you know, you see it all around me. Uh, but, you know, I just try to tune it out and focus on playing and getting better every single day and just continue to work hard. Um, so for me, you know, uh, that, that noise is going to be there no matter what I do. So uh, I'm just excited to get the season going, and, and I'm focusing on winning a lot of games. Mark Emmer. Yeah, Luke, it's been uh, over eight months since you played a game, I guess. Uh, how difficult was that for you to be away from a you know competitive basketball for that long? And does it, does it seem real now that you're actually going to have a game this week? Yeah, it does. You know, I, I feel the excitement of game week, and, and I think our, our whole team does. And we're just really ready to get out there. Um, we're preparing, we're getting ready. Um, so it's going to be a lot of fun. You know, it's, it's definitely been a while. Um, we're accustomed to starting the season a little bit earlier. Um, but, you know, we've been, we've been competing with each other, playing in practice for a while now. So, you know, I'm just excited to, to, to play somebody else. Tom Kaker. Well, Emmer took my question, so I'm going to ask this one. Um, all the young guys, when we talked to them last week, seems like a rite of passage to wear a Luca elbow at some point <laughs> During practice, um, what has that been like? Uh, is that kind of the rite of passage? Everybody gets a Luca elbow. You know, I think uh, you know when I catch the ball on the block, a lot of people try to try to double me and triple me and and do whatever. And especially in practice, they're always trying to you know get me to get the ball out of my hands. Uh, so you know they they reach in there with their faces and you know whatever. I just kind of puts them at risk. Um, so you know I I don't try to intentionally do anything, um, but I think it just kind of sort of happens. Uh, you know when you face the kind of pressure that I do. Um, those guys are all being aggressive and, you know, I love how competitive they all are to, you know, try and come steal a ball from me or double me or make it tough on me. And that's just getting me a lot better and preparing me for the real games. Chad Lysico. Uh, hi, Luca. Um, what, uh, how much, uh, Going into the season, you're going to be trying to get others involved. I know that's a big focus for you to, uh, you know, not not put up necessarily put up the giant stats you had last year, but to make sure everyone's getting involved. What is that a different type of mentality going in now? You know, honestly, you know, the mentality is the same. You know, I'm doing whatever it takes, um, you know, to win the game. Um, so you know, that's my mentality as a priority. Um, but obviously, I know I'm going to be facing, you know, even a different sort of pressure this year with you know, more double teams and more teams finding, you know, they kind of know who I am as, as last year, you know, kind of built up over this, as the season, you know, kind of progressed. Um, so, you know, I've, I've been, you know, getting really uh, a lot better at just being able to read double teams and, and get the ball to, to the shooters in the right spot, um, you know, when I can, um, but I'm going to be aggressive as well. So, you know, honestly, it's the same mentality. Like I said, it's just, you know, doing whatever, you know, my team needs to yeah. help us win the game. And if that's passing the ball, you know, I'm going to do that. Um, and if that's scoring, you know, I'm also going to do that. Yeah, just to follow up, I, mean, you, I think your career average is about one assist per game. Do you think, uh, do you expect that to go up this year? Yeah, you know, definitely. I think, you know, obviously the ball goes through my hands a lot more, um, you know, as each year goes on. Um, but especially this year with the amount of shooters we have, you know, I definitely think I could, I could see those numbers increasing. Um, so, you know, I'm going to be able, I'm, I'm, going, to, I'm going to be a selfish guy. Um, and when I'm covered, you know, I'm going to be able to find guys in the right spots um, and, and then they'll hit some shots. So, yeah, no, I definitely expect that to Im improve. David Eichel. Yeah, Luca, first of all, you know, my condolences to Jack, his family and you guys have, you know, it's heartbreaking. 
um, is an understatement. Uh, going to the basketball side of things, though, uh, uh, Fran basically said that Keegan Murray is a guy that he could see playing some minutes this year because of his rebounding and stuff. What have you seen from Keegan in practice and kind of what kind of stands out about his game? You know, he's relentless on the glass, you know, on, on both ends. You know, you see him on the offensive end, always getting his hand on the ball, you know, keeping it alive. Um, and he's done a really, really good job of that. And on the defensive end, you know, he's really quick. Uh, he, he gets to his spots quickly and can rise up and block a shot. Um, and he's also, you know, like I said, uh, really good on the glass. So I think, you know, I've seen a lot of things from him and I, I'm really, I've been really impressed, you know, since he's got here. You know, I always knew you know, coming in that both of the Murrays were shooters and they could score the ball. But, you know, seeing Keegan's, you know, development as a rebounder um, and as a defender, is, it's been impressive. So you know, I'm definitely excited to see what he can do for us and, and how he can help us, you know, coming this Wednesday and, and forward. Rick? Look, it was kind of fascinating last, as last season went on, watching how teams would try to defend you in different ways. Are you kind of anxious to see what they've come up with this season? You know, I think it's going to be, a, you know, a lot of the same. You know, it, it'll be interesting to see, you know, especially when, you know, teams start putting pressure on me and I'm able to find some of our open shooters. Um, it, it's going to see, it's going to be interesting to see how they adjust, you know, whether they're going to continue to double and, and triple when we have, you know, more shooters on the outside are going to be able to spread, stretch the floor. Um, and, you know, it, it's going to be interesting. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm ready for anything. You know, I've pretty much seen any defense you can see. Um, and, and I've definitely learned to adapt to anything in game. So, you know, I'm excited just to get out there as a competitor um, and, and win basketball games. But, you know, it's definitely going to be interesting to see, you know, what teams have for me this year. Okay, we have time for one or two more questions for Luca, if anyone has a question. Okay, thanks, Luca. Yeah, definitely. While we wait for Jordan, um, just to give you guys a heads up, uh, next week's weekly availability will be on Monday around the same time. Might start at 2 o'clock. Um, I'll let you know. And then as soon as we receive the start times for pretty much our entire schedule, I'll send out a kind of a tentative look at when all the Zooms will be throughout the course of the season. Obviously, they'll be subject to change. Um, but uh, I'll give you guys a heads up on that. So plan on the next one to be next Monday to preview the Western Illinois game. Okay, we have senior.
guard, Jordan Bohannon. If you have a question for Jordan, please raise your hand in the participant window. We'll start out the question from Mark Emmer. Yeah, Jordan, I know you and Jack are really close. Uh, sorry to hear the news about his father, I guess. How did, how did you hear that news and how did that hit you at the time you heard it? Yeah, we, we found out as a team at a team meeting that, that Monday or that morning. And, you know, I was absolutely devastated for, for him and what he's been through these last two, three years. It's unimaginable to even talk about it. I had, I just don't even have words to say for what he's has to, had to go through and um, his emotions that he's feeling now. I mean, he's with his family right now where it is where he should be and he needs all the time that he, that he, uh, can have with, with, with his family and I think his, his girlfriend's with him as well. So you know, he needs to be with his family, continue to have support from us. And I, I texted him a little bit the other day and, you know, he's just devastated. And the, the, the main thing that we need to be is just being together and making sure that we're there for him and continue to be there for him. Next question, Chad Leistico. Hey there, Jordan. Um, your eye looks a little better than the other day. <laughs> um, what uh, starting five, uh, Fran said, is going to be you and CJ and uh, Joe, Connor, and, and Luca. Last time you guys did that was against Iowa State. Uh, you like, what do you like about that uh, you five playing together? Yeah, I mean, we have, we have a lot of experience, and I think that's – I mean, I've said that from day one, that the experience that we have this team is going to take us a long ways, and – for us to have these the starting five that we do and all the experience we have under our belt is going to have the freshmen and underclassmen really feed off that energy. And we're going to try to tag, have them tag along with us and put, put them under our, our wing and everything we can do on a daily basis to make sure that they're ready for, you know, day one. And you know, North Carolina, North Carolina Central is a really good team. So we have to be ready for them the very first game. So obviously you, you play the point in that, lineup right and Connor at the four or do you guys kind of mix it up yeah we've been that's been what we've been doing at practice and but obviously we we play really fast paced so whoever gets the ball in off offensive rebound or a defense or defensive rebound then they take it so it's just kind of how our offense has been set up Rick Brown hey Jay Bo you you watched this program from a distance before you, you joined it, obviously, and you saw how, how low it was, and now you guys are at a pretty high spot. Um, just what has that been like for you to watch the program build and then to be part of it to you know, maybe get it even higher? Yeah, I mean, we've, we've built this program back to what, what we envisioned it to be when all these recruits came in, myself, and you know, I talked about me today, my, my class, uh, I'm the last one here, but we, we wanted to kind of feed off the energy that the previous team in 2016 kind of built off of. And we wanted to get that program to that standard. And I think, like, like I said, the preseason rankings is kind of a, a testament to what we put together these last couple of years and um, the teams that we've kind of built on year by year. I mean, I've dealt with the struggles my sophomore year and look goes there too and a lot of the other guys and how much we struggled. And then junior year was a way different story. And I think that we kept building year by year um, based off that that really adversity that we hit. So I think that was important for us to kind of feel what it, what it's like to lose because it's not a good feeling. We don't want to feel that that feel that feel uh, uh, feeling ever again. We haven't seen you with two healthy hips in about uh, three seasons. Uh, how, how has that changed your game? Yeah, I mean, I'm able – I feel a lot quicker. And, you know, just being in the weight room, I'm able to squat for once and able to do heavy weight. And, and that's just something I haven't done since high school, really, when I was – a I guess I'm kind of an old man, so when I was a young kid back back in the day. So, uh, but I, I feel I feel unbelievable. I'm so happy for the kind of work that I put forward these last six seven months, and it's put me in this position to be ready from day one. And being a year and year and a half, half out of both my hip surgeries, it's unbelievable. Kind of the path pathway I took to get here, but I'm happy the work I put forward to finally be here. David Eichel. Yeah, Jordan, uh, my condolences about um, for Jack, his family and you guys is, you know, you go through that. R Rick kind of took my question. So I guess I'll kind of follow up on that question. Have you surprised yourself at all? Because, I mean, this is the first time in three, four years that, you, like you said, you've played healthy. Is there anything that you've done uh, in skill development or anything else where you're just like, oh, I didn't I didn't know I could do that? Um, yeah, I mean, I feel like I was able to do things still, even with the injuries, because I, I've always been someone that challenged myself. And even if I had an injury, I was still going to do it no matter what, even if it hurt. So 
Um, I don't think from that aspect, nothing really changes, but I think my conditioning level has increased a lot, not from really a cardio standpoint, but my leg wise, I don't feel tired from my legs after, you know, halfway through the practice or at the end of practice. Now I, I know that my hips are healthy and I don't have to, you know, rely on an ice bath for an hour and a half after practice for once. I can just kind of be a little kid again and not really stretch or do, I mean, I still have to stretch, but not really do as much as I had to when I was hurt. Tom Caker. Jordan, uh, you talked about um, pace and how fast you guys play. Can you guys play even faster this year? And what's that going to look like, uh, you know, point wise? How, how, how fast can you guys go? Well, we're going to go as fast as the defense lets us, of course, but um, that's, that's always our goal. But also, I think our pace this year is going to improve drastically just because, you know, you have me coming in at the one and then Joe T coming in and we're able to kind of switch up the pace a lot. Um, I can shift to the two and, and just how our transition goes. Whoever gets the ball, they can just go. We have a lot of guards on the team that can push the ball in transition. So we know from, you know, I can play many spots on the floor and Joe T can as well, CJ, Weezy. We have a lot of guys that are, um, interchangeable in their position. So I think that will help for us to especially run sets late game. And um, our half court offense is going to be a lot different this year just because we have so many weapons this year. And um, kind of like how our first 10 games were last year, I was able to kind of spread the floor a little more. And um, I think that will help going forward this season. Mark Emmer. Yeah, Jordan, we, we know you got hit hard by the coronavirus uh, this summer. You've seen what's going on in college basketball even today, games getting canceled. Do you think it's prudent right now to start this season, or would you like to see something else happen? Do you want my honest answer, or do you want me to lie? Yes, obviously. <laughs> um, you know, I'm always one to speak my mind freely, but I, I think it's a little premature to start the season when it is. But um, I think the Big Ten and uh, University of Iowa have done everything possible for us to run smoothly. I wish every university in the country would do daily testing like we do because – it really changes the kind of mindset of, you know, where contact tr tracing and everything that goes around the coronavirus to be able to run a full season. But um, there's a lot, of, a lot of interchangeable parts that come in with the play when we have, you know, low majors, mid majors coming in that just don't have the money to really fund daily testing. So um, I, I wish, like I said, everyone had the same protocols, but that's just not the kind of environment we're living in right now. Okay, we have time for one or two more for Jordan. Next question, Don Doxey. Yeah, Jordan, a lot of your teammates have, have said that uh, Coach McCaffrey is exactly the same this year. He hasn't changed anything even with the higher expectations. Is that kind of what you've seen too, or have you, you noticed any differences at all? No, he's still coaching the same way, and he wants us to – I mean, he, he's always been one to block out um, the outside noise, and I think that's been huge when I first got here on campus because uh, there's, a, there's a lot of – uh, there's a lot of crappy people out there from uh, from a lot of different aspects of life. So I think uh, when, when we realized that my, when my freshman year coming in, that he just kind of said that, you know, not a lot of people care about you other than the guys in the program and your family and your friends. And I think that's been taken to my heart as well. A lot of the guys that came in to know that there's going to be people from the outside that are talking, but we're going to continue to put our head down and work every day. Okay, last question, Tom Kaker. Jordan, are you comfortable with the daily testing? Has that worked out well for you? What's it been like uh, having the daily test? Yeah, so I'm all my classes are online, so I have to get up at like 8.45, 9. So that's not a – that's kind of a struggle for me. But, you know, it, it's good for us, I think, to know um, right off the bat, you know, we get tested in the morning um, and have practice later in the day. So I think that's been huge for us to – have a full preseason of practice because we didn't stop once this preseason and that was huge for us. And that was just because of our daily testing that we did and we were able to um, kind of limit the contact tracing from other sports as well um, when we did have outbreaks from other sports. So I think that was huge for us to continue to keep running. And, um, you know, it, it was like, like I said earlier, I, I wish every school could do this, but, you know, just not everyone has a lot of money. Okay, thanks for your time, Jordan. Good luck on Wednesday.
Okay, our last student athlete today is sophomore guard Joe Toussaint. If you have a question for Joe, please raise your hand in the participant window. First question comes from Mark Emmert. Yeah, uh, Joe, obviously you got used to starting there at the end of last year, I guess. What's it going to be like coming off the bench this year? How, how does that change your approach to the game? Any other questions for Joe? I think that last answer was muted on my end. I didn't hear anything. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't hear that either. Uh, okay, Matt. hold on. Hold on here. He's getting there. Okay. Can you ask that again, Mark? Yeah. Sorry. Sorry, Joe. Um, yeah. Right. I just, obviously, you started. You were starting at the end of the last season. Now you're going to be coming off the bench, I think, because Jordan's back. How does that change your approach going into a game? Uh, I stated. Uh, I mean, uh, whether I come off the bench or start, it's not really a problem for me. Um, I'm just here to produce and get uh, wins. To be honest with you. Uh, so no matter if I play 10 minutes, five minutes, 11 minutes, 19 minutes, uh, I'm just here to produce. You know, I'm here to produce in any way I can. Next question, Chad Lystico. Hey, Joe, we just talked to Jordan, who um, you talked about playing a fast pace this year. Uh, how fast does Fran want you to go, uh, both you and him running the point? Uh, you know, we're going to push the ball, uh, makes and misses. You know, uh, we're a fast team. You know, we could score quick and we could score in a half per set. But, uh, you know, it's easy to get points off, uh, you know, pushing the ball, just probing it. And, um, you know, just taking smart shots, playing fast, but not playing nuts. Next question, David Eichold. Yeah, Joe, I know you and Cole Anthony, you know, grew up together really close. What was the NBA draft day like for you? And what was kind of that uh, first conversation with him after you saw his name uh, come across the board? Um, I was very, you know, excited and happy for him. Uh, Cole's like my family. You know, um, spent a lot of time with him, uh, lived with him for, you know, I didn't live with him, but I, you know, slept over his house for a long time. Uh, his mother takes care of me like I'm my own kid. Um, so I just see him as a brother. And I was, you know, very excited to see his name there at number 15. Um, you know, we had conversation. We talk about, you know, the NBA all the time. Talk about, you know, college all the time. And uh, I'm really close to him. So, you know, that meant a lot for me as much as it meant to him. Any other questions for Joe? Okay, Joe, thanks for your time. Good luck on Wednesday. Okay, thanks for everyone for joining.